Welcome back. You're with us on Bazaar. Our entire team is now standing by to prepare us for all the stocks that should be on our radar this Thursday morning, guys. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, Reema, first, let's start with uh, Indigo. Uh, what's happening here with their leasing plans? Uh, so you know that Indigo has been hit on account of the Pratt & Whitney engine issue. So nearly 40 of their planes are grounded. So they need new planes. So what DGCA sources have confirmed to CNBC TV 18 that Indigo has been allowed to wet lease 11 aircrafts. By wet lease, we, we mean that you lease the aircraft along with an operating crew. So this is a temporary stopgap arrangement because many of their planes have been grounded, right? So this is positive news. But what UBS goes on to say is that the Pratt & Whitney engine issues appear to be much larger than what they had expected. Consequently, according to them, Indigo might report a minor loss in Q2, versus expectations of a pat break even. So that is a bit of a worry. But uh, the big one to track today is going to be Bombay dying. And Surbhi joins in with the latest on their land deal. Surbhi. Thanks so much for that. So the Bombay Dying is going to monetize their Worli land parcel for 5,200 crores. Now they're going to sell this land to a subsidiary of Sumitomo Realty. Uh, the land parcel deal is going to happen in two phases. In the first phase, they're going to get 4,675 crores. And in the second phase, they're going to get 525 crores. Now this deal of 5,200 crores is almost two times the bomb, uh, co company's current market cap. Now, on the completion of this deal, the company will be able to extinguish all of its borrowings. The current debt of the company is 3,642 crores. The company also goes on to saying that it may pay dividend in the future and also it will have a strong treasury balance to fund the future realty projects. Also, the board has approved the development of further unutilized land parcels, which has the potential to create 3.5 million square feet of either residential or commercial space, which has a revenue potential of 15,000 crores. Okay, all right, uh, Surbhi, thanks very much uh, for that. That's a big one, and we'll uh, continue to track that uh, as we uh, go on. But uh, <clears throat> we got more stocks with the specific news flow, uh, Rima. Uh, yes, so let me go across to Ekta now, who joins in with some more pharma stocks. Ekta. Thanks for that. Well, it's a mix of uh, stocks that I'm looking at today. So, Suven Pharma, I expect that stock to be in the green. The cabinet has okayed a 9,589 crore FDI in Suven Pharma for 76% stake. So this is basically the deal in December 2022 where US-based PE firm Advent announced buying 50.1% stake for 6,313 crores. This triggered an open offer of 26% for 3,276 crores. Expect that stock to be in the green. In fact, all the stocks that I'm tracking to be in the green. Bajaj Healthcare, they've got an establishment inspection report from the US FDA for their API manufacturing facility at Gujarat. It was a pre-approval inspection. It was cleared with zero observations. This basically means that they can now file drug master files with the US market as well as CDMO or contract drug manufacturing opportunities open up for them when you get an approval such as this for a regulated market, especially the US FDA. Expect that stock to be in the green. IRCTC, they've signed an MOU with MSRTC, which is the Maharashtra State Road Transport Corp. This is to enable MS MSRTC's online bus booking services via IRCTC's bus booking portal and website. And NBCC has signed an MOU with the Ministry of Steel with RINL and National Land Monetization Corp for monetization of non-core assets of RINL at Vishakapatnam. They've also won an order from sale, which is worth around 180 crores. Okay, I got that. Thank you very much for uh, a roundup of a lot of those names. Uh, Sudarshan's joining in. He's got some more on his list as well. Sudarshan, good morning. In today's stocks new, there are four stocks which are going to be in focus. First one is Adani Enterprises. Its subsidiary, Adani Wind, gets certification for 5.2 megawatt wind turbine generator from German company Windgard. This certification enables Code to start series production for global markets. Next one is Cummins. Company has unveiled CPC BIV plus compliant genset range for Delhi NCR markets. These compliant gensets are designed to meet new emission standards. Co had first introduced this emission compliant genset engines ranging up to 800 kilowatt meter on July 5th this year. Next one is Lloyd Steels, which is now known as Lloyd's Engineering. Company has entered into agreement with BARC for transfer of technology. BARC is known as Bhabha Atomic Research Center. 
This license agreement is valid for five years, which will aid company in executing orders related to desalination. Last one is Kirloskar Ferris. NCLT has approved resolution plan of the company for corporate data, Oliver Engineering. Okay, got that. I will keep all of those in mind, Sudarshan. Thank you very much. Here's a quick recap of uh, the stocks. Ones that have positive news flow around them are Bombay dying on the back of that huge land monetization deal. Uh, there's the Subin Pharma, Bajaj Healthcare, IRCTC, NBCC, Adani Enterprises, Cummins, Lloyd Steel and Kirloskar Ferris. Uh, Interglobe Aviation is the only stock with some negative news flow around it. Okay, let's move on then. Ekta is uh, back uh, and she's going to run us through some of the interesting brokerage notes that she's picked out for the day. Uh, Ekta? Thanks for that. Well, I'll start with the financials. Macquarie has written on Axis Bank. They have a neutral rating, target 980. Margins and best case likely to be maintained in FY24. The ROA or return on assets sustainability in the near term is a key question according to them. With the OPEX to assets stabilizing and margins improving, the ROA could expand beyond 1.8%. Investec initiates a hold uh, with a target price of 103 on IDFC First Bank. They, it's created a niche according to them for itself given its high growth. Bernstein on IT, they believe the investor focus has moved from FI24 to FI25. Their selective large caps look better positioned than mid caps. As we look into FI25, they prefer large caps with a top pick as emphasis. Jeffries on Concord, buy rating, target price raised to 825 rupees. They believe the company should start to regain lost market share as the DFC network presence pays off. Lastly, Jeffries on Macrotech developers as well. Buy rating, target price of 860 rupees. The management believes the upturn is structural and they're going for long-term sales compounded annual growth rates. Okay, thank you very much for that. Let's uh, get a handle on what's <coughs> happening in the world of commodities. Manisha joins in. Manisha. Thank you so much for that. Well, I'm looking at the crude oil prices, which are still holding above $92 a barrel. The prices are up 3% on this week and up 9% on a month-on-month -month basis. Now, well, we have been reacting to the OPEC report as well that came in yesterday, suggesting that the global demand growth is going to be stronger. They also are estimating a big deficit in the fourth quarter at 3.3 million barrels per day, which is much higher than what EIA has said, about 230,000 barrels per day. So that is what seems to be supportive. What isn't doing so well is the metal space today. We have seen the nickel prices slip to a near 13-month lows. The copper prices have come off its highs as well. With the dollar index trading at around six-month highs, the U.S. inflation numbers coming in on the stronger side, and the street awaiting the U.S. retail sales and China numbers, it is going to be a choppy day continuing for the sector. Okay, well, Manisha, thanks very much uh, for that. <clears throat> Good uh, getting those details uh, from you. But uh, we'll take a, have to take a quick commercial break here. Deepan Mehta of Elixir Equities will be joining in uh, for some stock talk. Uh, that's uh, all the focus, broader markets, of course, in focus. Deepan is going to be here in just a bit.